Hi, my name is Richard Crawford, host of Supply and Demand, an enlightening webcast show where we delve into the dynamic world of the global supply chain, where we navigate through the complexities, disruptions, and innovations that shape this vital network of interconnected businesses. From sourcing raw materials to delivering finished products, we'll uncover the challenges that arise at each stage and explore the strategies for optimizing efficiency and sustainability. And each week, we'll highlight and discuss a specific supply chain event. And of course, I'm joined each week by my co-host and CEO, and now author, CEO of Atlas Network, and now author of a book called The Supply Chain Seesaw, Mr. Kareem Kafure. Hey. <laughs> Richard, thank you for the nice introduction. I appreciate it. It's always, uh, it's good to just be back, right? It's been a little bit since we've done a, a show and I'm happy we're back at it. We've got actually a, a pretty exciting series here that we're doing now. Yeah. And the guest today is going to play into this series. But but yes, as you said, I've been really busy. I've got a, a new website, which is kareemkafuri.com. I'm working on the personal brand. Yeah. And I've got a site for this new book, which is called Supply Chain Seesaw. Um, I'm going to be releasing it officially at the um, Association of Supply Chain Management in Austin, Texas. Just to be clear, September. it's not a children's book, right? Not a children's book. Not <laughs> this time. Not this time. The next one. The next one will be a pop-up book. Maybe there'll be some coloring. Maybe a little seesaw in it. Yeah, a little seesaw. This this one's kind <laughs> of interesting in the fact that, you know, I actually created a new economic term. I trademarked oh, wow. an economic term which is called Seesaw Socioeconomics. Seesaw um, I'm very, Socioeconomics, I can say a it. Lot of, it. There's a lot of S's. You got to say it, you know, Sally sells seashell yeah, yeah. the seashore. So Seesaw Socioeconomics, which basically is this idea that um, divergent interests of participants or what we call riders on this metaphorical seesaw actually create like momentum, which is needed for global trade. And Very that it's cool. not about generating equilibrium, but rather a lack of equilibrium that generates, you know, business and opportunity through concessions or through um, uh, through imbalance and compromise and abandonment, different kinds of mechanisms that happen in business. And this is this idea of this seesaw. And there's a couple of other really cool sort of dynamic uh, charts and business models and things that are in the book. And it's all about, you know, 20 plus years of doing this supply chain management thing. So I'm quite excited about it. And uh, I'm sure I'll be talking about it and bringing it up. And we'll, we'll maybe we'll discuss it when we're in Austin too. We'll, we'll yeah, there you go. At the, at the ASCM event in September. Well, it's so, coming. Yeah, so let's, coming so quick. at the end of the show, we'll put out uh, the information on where people can um, purchase the book um, sure. or, or go to your website and find out more information. But for now, Let's bring in our next guest, who is a very, very exciting, um, very intelligent young lady. Um, her name is Sofia Rivas Herrera. Now, Sofia self-identifies as a supply chain ambassador, and her mission is to advocate for the field and inspire young generations from diverse backgrounds and cultures to join the industry. Now, she's also recognized as a LinkedIn top voice and LinkedIn community top voice and supply chain management, as well as emerging leader and supply chain by the CSCMP. Now, Sophia is a keynote speaker, writer, podcast host, and she has more than five years experience from academic research and field studies to warehouse operations, demand planning, and network designs. And she's currently working as supply chain network design and optimization manager at HP within our global supply chain logistics team. Sophia, a very warm welcome to the show. And is there anything you don't do? <laughs> anything I don't do? I don't do hiking. So please do not invite me to those kind of activities. I might struggle and complain all the way. Now, but... <laughs> now as a Scotsman who, who who comes from a very beautiful country where we hike all the time, I know by feeling just a little bit. I know. I mean, I could go, but that's my only disclaimer would be I'll complain all the way, <laughs> all the way up or all the way down or both. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sophia, it's, it, it's good to see you again. I'm very, very happy that we're having you on the show. Uh, Richard hasn't really met you, but I've actually kind of, we've bumped into each other in, in different ways. Um, yeah. I remember the first time we sort of 
kind of ran into each other was at Manifest. I was on a panel with basically a bunch of pro-Mexico, you know, people, Enrique Perret and, you know, a bunch of other folks that were on the panel. And, um, you know, we had a good conversation, I think, somewhere around that place. And then we ran into each other again at the home delivery world, where essentially I said, hey, you know what? We got to have you on the show. We've, we've got a really fun show where we kind of get into different ins and outs of the industry. And we just actually had um, Alberto Villarreal from uh, Napa Noa the, uh, the other week. And I think mm-hmm. Enrique is actually going to be coming on the show. So we're really we're really delving into a lot of, uh, you know, kind of Mexico and and the Mexican things. power into this amazing yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then and then you and I, you went to MIT, correct? Yeah, I did the GC log program, which okay. I I describe it as a compressed peel of the MIT as um, management how's it called? Uh, masters. Yes, yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's like a small do a smaller dose or size, but all compressed into one single pill that you take in a very short time. And I, and I love that because you know I actually got my um my degree in AI strategy and business from MIT, and then I was actually I'm a big fan of Yoshi Sheffy, Professor yes. Sheffy, and I was there at the Crossroads 2024 event at MIT. So I I really like what MIT is doing. So. When I, I knew that you were at MIT, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, we sort of have a little interesting uh, connectivity that way, too. Correct. So. Yeah, so, no, thank you so much, Richard and Karim, for having me on the show. And yeah, definitely, I think, like, when you meet another uh, supply chain enthusiast or someone that's very passionate in the industry, I think we all kind of identify these different connections that we all have. And at the end, we all know each other. And I think... Um, it is a great opportunity to form synergies. So, so Sophia, what's the most exciting thing that's going on in your world right now? The most exciting thing in my world would be, so I think you'll have the preliminary news. It has not been out yet, so I'm trusting you with it. But basically, I'm taking over Supply Chain Now in Espanol. Oh, so wow. we're. It's a podcast under the Supply Chain Now umbrella. And we're doing right now the rebranding, the restructuring of how the episodes and seasons will be. And it's exciting because I I think like I had previously been a co-host and a guest in that in that show. Yeah. And now like it's it kind of feels like it's becoming my own project. And I think that's I've never done it before. So I'm learning a lot in terms of strategy and how to be more appealing to your audience, uh, creating different content in different formats and ways. So I think that's something that really excites me. And also because my twin sister and I uh, were both working on it. So very cool. Well, I'll give you a piece of advice, Sophia. Don't copy anything that we do at all. It'd be a disaster. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> if you that, any one of you learn Spanish in the span of the next couple months, yeah, you can be on the show for sure. All right. Well, I'll leave that. I'll leave that to Kareem. I can hardly yeah. speak English. I'm from Scotland, and our English isn't the best. So. <laughs> I can I can say me tiende todos yo no hablo mucho. Okay, you <laughs> have a, a thirty second segment with us, and that's there you it. Go. Well, yeah. that, that's that's very exciting, Sophia, and and we've heard it here first. We won't necessarily be the first to get it out the press, but we'll be early. <laughs> as soon as as soon as you tell us, we'll let we'll let everybody all hear it here. So yeah. I feel very feel very privileged that we're we're premiering that information. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I'm very excited to have you on the show for so many reasons. I mean, we are focusing in these days on all innovations in the realm of supply chain. And one of the key ones that keeps coming back. And being promoted is the ideas of kind of Mexico US trade relations and nearshoring and groups like, again, like Napa Noa, like we talked about with Alberto Villarreal or, or what Enrique is doing um, yeah. over at the uh, foundation. Um, I think there's the North, North Capital Forum, which is going to be happening in October in Mexico I, City. In yeah. Mexico City. I may come to that event. Um, and then I, I'm actually doing something right now with Forbes Mexico. 
which is going to be translated into Spanish around some aspects of nearshoring. I mean, so this is so we're very excited that you're here because you know you're a voice in this realm. You're from the region, you know, and and we're going to be very interested to kind of hear your take on things. Um, I mean, I know we have a couple of questions that we're going to get into in the hot seat, but just generally speaking, I mean, overarching someone who doesn't know much about uh, near shoring or doesn't know anything about sort of the relationships between Mexico and the United States. I mean, what would you say in, you know, kind of a short version about your feelings about what's happening now? Yeah, so I think basically, um, Right now, Mexico is positioning itself as a new gateway for U.S. and also Canada, uh, not only from a trade perspective, but also from a value creation, a value proposition of different ways of production from our country to that those other countries. And I think it's a great opportunity to also show this other side of Mexico, because <laughs> Whenever I get asked, oh, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Mexico. I have I get all different questions, all related to things that I am um, perhaps not that excited about my country, yes. right? Yes. But I think like this is a great opportunity show to showcase our skills in labor, our um, experience in supply chain and logistics, and also the kind of value that we add into creating these shorter versions of supply chains for the US and Canada. No, I think that's amazing. And, and I and I agree with you 100%. I think a big part of that is going to come down to really the education, right, where people and businesses can start to think immediately as Mexico as a solution, rather than just an alternative. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, when it comes to manufacturing, you know, I, I have my offices in China, but I've always been um, agnostic with regards to just where gets the best result. Um, so as long as, you know, Mexico keeps providing the service and the platform and the benefit of the, let's say, better geography, you know, then I think it will start to transition through time from being, again, an alternative to actually being a first thought or a first mm -hmm. solution, especially around particular industries, for sure. So, I mean, I'm I'm excited about it. I mean, again, being a student of the realm of supply chain like yourself and with people that are consistently, you know, developing and innovating, it's great to be a part of new things that are happening in the space. And I think that Mexico, although, you know, in the realm of supply chain and manufacturing, you know, has been doing this for decades and decades, I think there's a real opportunity to have a great positioning in the world today. Um, so I'm excited to see it. You know, I'm very excited about it. Exactly. And that's the key word, right? Positioning ourselves, Mexico, as a good option for others. A good option, not only in terms of, oh, yeah, they're cheaper or they're like, we will have control over them. It's like, how can we actually turn into partners? Yeah. Not, not like taking advantage from one to the other. I think that's something yeah. we need to yeah, redefine. That's, that's important. All right, Sophia, are you that was the easy part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to now you have to be in our hot seat segment of the show. Um, and just for anybody that is not familiar with the hot seat, that means that we ask Sophia three questions that we want her to answer as close to five minutes as possible. So doing it quickly and getting it in three minutes is not the challenge. It is getting it as close to the five minute mark as possible. You can actually go over um, as long as you're close to five minutes. In fact, our reigning champion, um, I believe went just under a second over. So it's a very tight parameter to beat. It's tough to beat. So are you ready for the hot seat segment? I I think I am. All right. I don't promise anything. That's all right. That's okay. I <laughs> promise you'll have fun. That's all I'll I have fun. Have all Just right. Have a good Talking time for with... 10 minutes. No, Here we go. <laughs> a, a new champion in the making. Are you ready, Sophia? Ready. All right. Your time starts now. Okay. Question one, Sophia. What are the main benefits that Nearshoring to Mexico offers to U.S. companies in terms of supply chain efficiency, efficiency and cost reduction? Well, I think the first three things that are main benefits are proximity and creating shorter supply chains. 
So your transportation cost and time service level will and might improve. Second thing, maybe in terms of labor and production, and I think we touched this at the beginning, it's not only a matter of cost efficiency, but also value creation. So how can we position our labor, not only as operational, but also as a strategic role? And the third thing would be also taking advantage of the current trade agreements that we have between countries. So in terms of customs, I think it will be easier. Next question. <laughs> That's coming from me, Sophia. What specific challenges does the supply chain between the United States and Mexico face due to current trade policies and regulations? And how can these obstacles be overcome? I think the first thing is flexibility in terms of how can the Mexican market and the Mexican ideas and capacity or beliefs of how we work or the way we work uh, are key for this. How can we make bridges across cultures and be able to keep our signature uh, message or way of working but also adapt to new cultures and new ways of working um the second thing i'll be talking about this a lot labor positioning so how can we also be seen as leaders and not as just followers and i think the third thing is an icon how can we as mexico be seen as an uh, economical advantage so not only in terms of being cheaper but also because it makes sense for a long-term re relationship and all these three things come into creating the foundation for others to come and position not only bring all their skills or the all their labor labor and all their infrastructure and implanted here in Mexico, which is something that has been happening with uh, Chinese companies. So they're bringing everything from there to here. And I don't think that's necessary. So if we are able to adapt and be flexible and create bridges, then they can use our infrastructure, our labor and our technology, which is existing, but not as fast as it has been seen in other countries. You're tracking pretty well. You're about just under three minutes. So you've got just over two minutes for this last question, just to give you a little bit of a hint. So question number I think that's three. Cheating. Sophia. Uh. <laughs> that's all right. Question number three. How will the adoption of sustainability and circular economy practices influence nearshoring strategies between the US and Mexico? And what impact can these practices have on the overall supply chain? I think what happened with the nearshoring trend in the last 30 years with China has to serve as an example of what not to do, right? right. N n avoid the exploitation of environment and our natural resources and also of our people and our labor. I think those are things that we should take as lesson learned and how to avoid them. So I think the most important part is the creation of public policies that regulate our operations and how we uh, produce, how we um, transport, and how we also take into account the reverse logistics of whatever we're doing. And these have to be accountable to global standards and sustainability goals that match other countries that have already been through this. The thing is like, it has to be in the public agenda, in the government agenda. So from the private sector and the public sector, there needs to be a bridge of communication and a way to find synergies to create these policies. If that's not existing and we believe that each is individual and individual and each works in separate ways, then we will never find this uh, collaboration or these two happen. All right, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. You did, you, you stayed under uh, five minutes, but only by about probably 15, 20 seconds or so. 15 milliseconds. <laughs> 15 milliseconds, yes, there you go. So so very well done. You got you got much closer than a lot of people get. So the, the champion's going to be hard to beat. I mean, under a second, that's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's but, insane. <laughs> but anyway, but congratulations, you made it through the hot seat. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Here's where the editor's ads clapping and <laughs> hearing right. noises. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> exactly. Will, you you're going to be great. You're going to be great on your new show because you're going to produce it. You're going to be hosting it. You're going to edit it. So pre-production, production, and post-production, you got it all. And and you know, uh, Richard, one thing that Sophia does is, you know, when she's at these shows, she has such a presence when she's at these shows. Um, she she always tends to wear like red and and <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I think it's like a thing that that she's built up a nice persona about herself. Um, and, and I think that she's just going to carry that forward to this great new show. So, I mean, you know, we have to learn Spanish, apparently, so that we can actually be guests on this show. Otherwise, it's going to have to be, you know, we're just going to have to go back on our show again. It might be or if I find like an AI tool that right. translates <laughs> that actually, at the same time. I don't that know. actually Speak happened to me. Richard speaking in Spanish. But that, it actually happened to me on in my other day job, my hosting the television show, Leave No Trace. I speak French in a couple of countries. They've dubbed it over. So my mm -hmm. my French is really good because, you know, they've added the voiceover. <laughs> it's just your lips are moving at the my lips are moving. <laughs> at the different time than the doesn't, language. It doesn't quite sync up, but that's okay. It's French. So so Pia, where, where are you me. where are you gonna be in the next couple of weeks? Are we gonna be able to see you at any kind of events that are coming up or shows where we could maybe be able to, you know, see you in person again? Mm, I'm thinking and still working on the logistics of it to go to CSCMP Edge, but that's with an asterisk because yes. this year, uh, and I've, I've said this a lot, but this year, many of my close friends are getting married in between oh, September that's... and December. So I'm like, I cannot miss this event for them. Yeah. But yes. yeah, definitely for next year, I think you'll hear in the next couple of weeks, some announcements for next year um, that for in-person events that I'm planning to i would love to go to the north capital forum yes city but still it's very tight uh, but yeah definitely next year i won't miss it well we'll be excited to see you and keep up with you with regards to uh any of the shows that you're going to be attending and everything else but for the audience members that are here how can they get a hold of you or find out more about the things you're doing what are some of your links and feel free to just say them and we'll obviously put them here at the bottom as well. Yeah, so the easiest way to get a hold of me is through LinkedIn. So if you send me a connection a request with a message, it will pop up in my list higher because currently I, I need to be very grateful for the, I think, 100 and plus connections that are still pending but I like to take my time I like to learn about you what you do how can we collaborate so right. I take my time looking at your profile so if you send me a quick message with your request then it will be easier and the other thing is like I would just also to start following already supply chain now in espanol and if you're not very good with Spanish it doesn't matter you can learn three two words within and we'll try to find ways of using AI yeah. subtitle captions, yeah. I don't know, yeah. uh, for your English speaking um, audience. But yeah, I think you'll definitely find value there as well. And yeah, I think those are the two things. Hopefully by the end of year, I'll have a website, but we're, we're still working on that, finding uh, ways to accelerate that. But yeah, LinkedIn is the best way. Perfect. And Kareem, how, how can people get a hold of you? And remember, you know, let them know how they can get that book. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I don't have my book either, but. <laughs> um, I mean, our, our company is theatlasnetwork.com for basically global supply chain solutions where we help, you know, make ideas into reality. Um, on LinkedIn, it's it's my my name, Kareem Kafoury. Uh, I have a new website, which is kareemkafoury.com for like the personal brand stuff. And then for the book, it's uh, Supply Chain Seesaw, which is the dot com. That's the name of the book, Supply Chain Seesaw. Um, so, uh, you know, excited to hear more about uh, people's needs and how we can help and, uh, you know, continue to dialogue in this very unique environment of supply chain management. Yeah, fantastic. And of course, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And just a reminder, 
that each week we'll have a very special guest on and you can join us. And also don't forget to follow us on our pages at YouTube and LinkedIn. Are we, are we doing this now? So oh, yeah. That's a good idea. At YouTube and yeah, subscribe here. <laughs> subscribe here. There you go. There you go. And that is the Supply and Demand Show at both YouTube and LinkedIn. Sophia, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I'm really looking forward to see how things pan out for you. I know it's going to be very exciting. And hopefully one day I'll get to meet you in person one day. For sure. Definitely. Right. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye, you everyone. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Sophia. Appreciate it.